Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video, and did you know that over 80% of the Earth's surface has volcanic origins? That includes surfaces both above and below sea level. That's the first of many explosive facts about volcanoes I'm going to share with you today, and no, I will not apologize for that pun. If you're wondering how to know if a volcano is considered active, many volcanologists actually say active volcanoes are ones that have erupted in the past 10,000 years. By that definition, there are currently about 1,510 on Earth. But that doesn't mean you can find a volcano just anywhere, because their locations almost always have to do with the tectonic plates that make up the Earth's surface. Volcanoes are most likely to be at the edges of those plates or around hot spots on them. By the way, it's known as magma when it's below the Earth's surface. The same stuff is called lava when it erupts from a volcano. 50% of the active volcanoes above sea level on Earth are in something known as the Ring of Fire in the Pacific Ocean. It goes all the way from New Zealand to the Western Americas. But in the past 500 years, one-third of all the lava that erupted on Earth was in the obviously misnomered Iceland. By the way, one time I was in Iceland and it was actually like raining up from the ground because the wind was coming at us at like 70 miles an hour, and a tour guide said to me, as you can see, the weather is often quite mild in Iceland. We should really call it Greenland. And I was like, you should call it Mars, because nobody should live here. Okay, back to volcanoes. There are different types of volcanoes, like there are shield volcanoes, which are generally large and very wide. They're made up of low viscous lava. Stratovolcanoes are taller and steeper. They're made out of other stuff, like ash and tephra. And cinder volcanoes have no ash, but are made up of tons of other debris. There's also such a thing as mud volcanoes, though they don't produce lava, so they're not technically volcanoes. People call them that because mud flows out of them as if it were lava, and they're usually made out of mud themselves. But moving back to non-mud eruptions, we measure volcanic eruptions by the Volcanic Explosivity Index. This system was invented in 1982 by a man named Chris Newhall. It uses height, duration, and the amount of material in the eruption to determine its strength and size. The scale goes from 0 to 8, but there hasn't been an 8 in at least 10,000 years so we're due. Volcanic eruptions can cause changes to the Earth's entire climate. For instance, Mount Tambora in Indonesia erupted in 1815, and in 1816, the Northern Hemisphere had an unseasonably cold year. It even got the nickname, the year without a summer. That year, Mary Shelley, then Mary Godwin, went on vacation in Switzerland, and because of the terrible weather, she participated in a writing contest with her friends, in which they tried to write gloomy stories. That night inspired her to write Frankenstein, so we can kind of thank volcanoes for the novel. Going back a little further in volcano history, the Greek philosopher Empedocles is often considered the first volcanologist. It's said that he died by jumping into the volcano Mount Etna in modern-day Sicily to prove that he was immortal only to learn that he wasn't. So now you may want to know what exactly about jumping into a volcano would cause death. Well, it's unlikely to drown in lava because human bodies are less dense than lava, so technically you would float. But the temperature of lava is between 1200 and 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, so it would definitely burn you to death. Even before touching the lava, though, it's probable that you would die of asphyxiation just from the radiant heat. A mythological figure in ancient Hawaiian legends is Pele, the goddess of fire and volcanoes, among other things, and because of her, some aspects of volcanoes have names with variations on Pele, like Pele's hair refers to a type of volcanic glass that looks kind of like strands of hair, and Pele's tears are solidified lava, usually in the shape of teardrops. We also have cave paintings of volcanoes from ancient times. One of these can be found in the Chauvet Cave in southern France. It dates back 37,000 years, and there's also a mural in southwestern Turkey from about 7500 BCE that it's believed to be of an eruption as well. In 2010, the Eyjafjöll volcano in Iceland erupted and air travel had to be stopped in a large part of Europe for six days. Ten million travelers were affected. Malio birds are a breed that incubate thanks to geothermal energy from volcanic soil. That geothermal energy helps the birds to be ready to fly instantly after they hatch. Moving on from volcanic soil to volcanic lightning, sometimes when volcanoes erupt, there's also lightning as part of the eruption. And experts believe that the lightning bolts 
results are caused by particles splitting. For some unknown reason, the positive particles migrate toward one area, while the negative particles migrate somewhere else. Of course, volcanoes can have terrible effects on the lives of people. Like in 1883, when Krakatoa erupted in Indonesia, tens of thousands of people died, and the explosion was heard in Sri Lanka, 4,500 miles away. After that eruption, Krakatoa, which is an entire island, disappeared into a small stump. And then, in 1927, the mountain re-emerged. It has since grown to be about 1,300 feet tall. Volcanoes do that, and the appearance of them can happen very quickly. Like the Paracutan volcano in Mexico popped up unexpectedly in 1943. A farmer discovered it in his cornfield one day, and by the end of the week, it had grown to be five stories tall. By 1952, it was almost 1,400 feet. Nowadays, its elevation is around 9,200 feet. Given these stories, you can probably see that volcanoes are no joke. And yet, on April Fool's in 1974, a man named Oliver Bicker lined 70 old tires inside Mount Edgecombe in Alaska and then lit them on fire, making local residents think it had erupted. It's an interesting question, like, where is the line of a good April Fool's joke and a bad April Fool's joke? And I think the line is when you make actual people fear for their actual lives. A real Alaskan volcano erupted in 2006. It was the Aleutian Cleveland volcano, and the first person to notice was a man on the International Space Station. No one needs to alert people when Kilauea in Hawaii erupts because it's in a state of continuous eruption and has been for over 30 years. Another impressive volcano is the Olympus Mons, the tallest volcano in the solar system. It's on Mars, and it's around 88,600 feet high, about three times the height of Mount Everest. Hawaii's largest volcano is Mauna Loa. It stands about 13,680 feet above the water, and even more, 16,400 feet sits underwater. Speaking of underwater volcanoes, the largest one is about the size of New Mexico. It's called Tamu Massif, and it's in the Pacific Ocean about a thousand miles away from Japan. Interestingly, it's named after Texas A&M University, Tamu, because a research team from the school made some important discoveries about it. You can actually surf non-underwater volcanoes. The best way to do this is with a toboggan made of wood and metal. Surfers have reached over 50 miles per hour riding down the side of volcanoes. That's a hobby I won't be taking up. For a safer volcano-related activity, some use its heat to cook food. That's how they do it at the El Diablo restaurant in the Canary Islands. They use geothermal heat from the local fire mountains to cook their food. According to the National Park Service, if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, we'd probably have at least multiple weeks' notice, but it's not expected to erupt for the next 1,000 to 10,000 years. However, when it does erupt, it will be catastrophic. Another famous volcano that might erupt again one day? Vesuvius in Italy. Officials have an evacuation plan just in case. A Vesuvius observatory team recommends evacuating an area of about 13 miles if there starts to be signs that Vesuvius might erupt, but that's based on a worst-case scenario. And finally, I return to my salon to tell tell you that there's still a lot to learn about volcanoes. Like, just in 2015, scientists found a connection between a chain of volcanoes 1,240 miles long throughout Australia. This is the largest known chain of volcanic activity anywhere on land on Earth. There's basically one mantle plume underneath the surface that links this activity, which includes volcanoes in the northeast of the continent, like Hillsboro, all the way down to the southern island of Tasmania. Thanks for watching Metal Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these lovely people. As we say in my hometown, don't forget to avoid the Yellowstone super eruption.